Thank she you spoke so much. Talk about the uh, the uh, 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 most important aspect that is intermittent fasting, the facts and the myths that we faced today. Thank you so much, Shafali. And at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Rajiv Chavla and Dr. Jagdish Shalini for giving me this opportunity. I'm going to be talking about a very um, uh, interesting topic that is intermittent fasting, myths and facts. So now intermittent fasting has become extremely popular. And, uh, you know, uh, you have people talking about it, about going on a fast uh, or, you know, doing some 16 hours or eight hours fast and without understanding the science. So to begin with, let's look at what happens. So we know, you know, whenever we go for a movie, we know that uh, there is an ad of tobacco, which is shown, which causes cancer, which causes oral cancer. But in that same movie theater, a lot of times we actually land up buying these samosas and these fries and these popcorn. And we, after knowing that unhealthy diets actually kills more people than tobacco or high blood pressure. Now, intermittent fasting. So therefore, it's important to, you know, have a good regime of uh, diet. And intermittent fasting is one of the popular ones. Now, intermittent fasting actually is is practiced as a part of religious um, uh, component for many, many years, but it was actually made very, very popular by guys in the IT field. So the person who really made IF very popular was Jack Dorsey, who founded Twitter then. And uh, then he would say that he would keep fast for 22 hours a day, so on and so forth. Even Steve Jobs did that. And Mark Zuckerberg also tried to do it. And hence, intermittent fasting actually caught on all over the uh, world. So what are the benefits of caloric restriction? Now, we all know that caloric res restriction is known to promote weight loss, and it represents a dietary method that has numerous positive effects in obese individual. Caloric restriction also improves health status in normal weight people. So a lot of time, normal weight people also tend to do intermittent fasting, and it is seen that when they do it, they actually, their health improves. The reduction of caloric intake between 60 to 70% of daily requirement increases longevity by 30 to 50% in many, many animal species. And therefore, it is thought that intermittent fasting is great. Now, what are the reason, reasons for benefits of caloric restriction? One hypothesis actually claims that it modifies the energy metabolism. Other hypothesis says it reduces mitochondrial production of oxygen radical decreases oxidative stress and therefore the damage which is produced by accumulation of reactive oxidation species to proteins, lipids and nucleic acid and uh, probably that is the reason that reduced caloric intake has a positive effect on longevity. So that therefore caloric restriction is very important and intermittent fasting has been shown to be a solution to take advantage of caloric restriction benefit, but it does not have its side effect. Now, we all know what is twin cycle hypothesis, and we have seen that reduction of calories drastically, in fact, could show remission of uh, diabetes also. And we have seen that uh, with this trial, uh, direct trial. Now, what is the effect of meal frequency on weight and metabolic parameters? Now, this is an interesting study because we come from a point where a couple of years back, they were talking about eat food every couple of hours. Don't eat too much, but eat food every couple of hours to lose weight or to maintain blood sugar. And again, this was a study which was done in Prague, Czech Republic, where they actually uh, did an open crossover single-centered study of 54 patients with type 2 diabetes who were treated with OHS, both men and women between 30 and 70 years of age, BMI between 27 and 50, and an A1C of uh, between 6 and 11.8, that's approximately 12. Um, and they, they were both asked to follow hypocaloric diet. One regime was six meal pattern. Other regime was two meal pattern for 12 weeks each. And after that, they were crossover. In both diet regime, very interestingly, they had the same macronutrient and energy content. Participants were asked to continue their pre-existing medication regime, except when hypoglycemia occurred uh, uh, recurrently. The randomized crossover 24 hour, uh, 24 week study demonstrated superior effect of two meals per day on body fat, 
a body weight, hepatic fat content and plasma fasting glucose, so on and so forth. Also insulin sensitivity. The effect of meal frequency on metabolic clearance rate of glucose and beta cell function was not significant. So it was seen that weight loss per se was better with a lesser, less snacking or a smaller meal regime. So these were the, the results. Now we know fasting is a spiritual uh, discipline and almost all religions across the world actually are uh, uh, recommend fasting. And fasting can is, what is fasting? It's voluntarily withholding food for spiritual health or other reason. Fasting may be done for a period of time, a few hours to a month in end. And in that sense, fasting is part of everyday life. And uh, it is known that Hippocrates, father of modern medicine, Considered that, uh, considered that to eat when you are sick is to feed one's illness. So therefore, humans, like most of the animals, do not eat when they become sick. For this reason, fasting has been called as physician within. So fasting instinct makes um, animals and human anorexic when they are sick. So it is very important. Fasting is a very important part of our uh, life. Now, there are many types of intermittent fasting programs. There is a five is to two program where you can eat for five days and not eat for two days. Then there is lean gains, that is eat for 10 hours, eat, stop, eat, so if, uh, fast one full day and otherwise eat normally warrior diet where you eat one meal a day. And then, of course, there is a 16 is to eight method, which is very, very popular across India where people do not consume food for 16 hours and then consume food in a eight hour uh, win, uh, window and that is more doable for people rather than consequently fasting for two days and eating for five days that is a little more difficult to follow rather time restricted feeding is easier so um, so what are, these are characteristics of most common type of uh, intermittent fasting so intermittent energy restriction where you eat for a day and don't eat for a day versus time restricted feeding where you do not eat for a period of time in a day say 16 hours and then eat for eight hours. So the logic involved here is there is reduction in compensatory metabolism, um, metabolic response. Here there is a circadian rhythm, which is considered, of course, this includes not eating late in the night. So if you're using the daytime to eat, then uh, this will happen. Main principle of weight loss here is induction of uh, energy intake in both fasting period, a set of days normally within a week, and the year in time restricted feeding, it is not for more than 24 hours. And we know that when there is fasting, which takes place uh, in, uh, there is ketogenic state, which is created. And then of course, there is utilization of fatty acids for generation of energy. And when it is restored to normal state after consuming, then uh, glucose is used as a, a glucose is used as energy to generate ATP. Now, what are the benefits of intermittent fasting? There are many benefits so uh, the, uh, the benefits which are uh, which are said are uh, they protect against neurogenerative diseases, insulin levels drop and human growth hormone increases. It reduces insulin resistance, lowers blood glucose level, reduces risk of heart disease, reduces blood pressure and cholesterol, boosts fat metabolism, extends lifespan, reduces oxidative damage, removes waste material and induces uh, reduces leptin levels and increases testosterone levels. So if you look at it, there are a lot of advantages of fasting and we know that because there is a uh, there is a change in the metabolic switch uh, because of restriction of energy there is increase in the health span and there is increase in longevity among animals so this is uh, this is the uh, these are many reasons why with because of which weight loss occurs and also there is an impact on gut microbiota. Very interestingly, there is also an impact on appetite. So you find that, you know, typically people feel that if they skip one meal or they fast for a prolonged period of time, actually appetite reduction happens and they are unable to eat in the following meal. And of course, there are cardiovascular effects like reduction, reduction in oxidative stress. There is restoration of circadian rhythm and of course, ketogenic state, which changes the energy metabolism. Now, there, there, is very, uh, there are two types of uh, diets, right? There is intermittent energy restriction, that is intermittent fasting, or there is continuous energy restriction. And it is found that currently there is insufficient data to support that 
intermittent energy restriction in any form can affect um, CVT risk markers, blood pressure, uh, blood lip, uh, lipid levels or insulin or glucose to a greater extent than continuous energy restriction. So as of today, there are very few studies which prove that one is better than another. Sorry. Now there is a trial which took place, which is called as the Helena trial, which was which was a controlled one year trial in 150 OB, uh, overweight or obese participants who were randomly assigned to three arms. There was uh, intermittent caloric restriction in one arm uh, two, uh, on two self-selected or uh, non-consecutive days a week with 25% of estimated energy requirement and five days a week without energy restriction. Then there was a continuous caloric restriction. There is daily restriction of less than 20% of the estimated uh, energy requirement. And of course, there was a control group. Now, uh, what results from Helena's trial show that there was no significant difference in adipose tissue transcriptome measured in 20, 28 pre-selected genes between both the groups, whether it was uh, intermittent caloric restriction or continuous caloric restriction. It also indicated that the timing of energy restriction does not induce differential transcriptional regulation of adipocyte, adipose tissue metabolism at net energy intake. So re results of Al Helena trial showed that uh, neither ICR nor CCR are superior to other with respect to weight loss and maintenance and improvement in the cardiovascular risk factor. Now, this, this was one of the uh, older studies which was shown. Now, what are the problems with intermittent fasting, considering that we are looking at myths and facts both? Now, what are, uh, so although intermittent fasting is very promising di dietary procedure for improving health status in obese population with metabolic pathology, all day extreme caloric restriction are associated with hunger and irritability, which makes them difficult to implement. So again, intermittent fasting or uh, uh, intermittent caloric restriction is not for everybody. There are people who cannot handle being hungry for a prolonged period of time. It makes them very hungry, very irritable. So it does not work for them. So um, therefore, a um, um, far more compliant alternative would be a time-restricted feeding where you are not eating for a couple of hours in every day. So these are various uh, effect of various kinds of, uh, of, inter of intermittent fasting and the, their impact on uh, metabolic parameters. So alternate day fasting. So this is evidence in rodents and this is evidence in humans. And there they have shown that there are really no dramatic changes in body weight but there is increase in insulin sensitivity. Uh, there is no effect in glucose, lipid, or protein metabolism in healthy, lean men. Uh, so, um, uh, then uh, there is about, um, so these are, so there, there are many studies and each study is showing different things. With time-restricted feeding, the extended morning fast did not result in compensatory intake at lunch meal in obese individuals. I think that is very important, which a lot of people worry that if I don't eat a breakfast, then when I eat a lunch, I'm going to eat a lot of food and I'm going to undo what I did all through the time. So that is something which is not happening. Eventually people start eating less. Then um, there is also religious and spiritual fasting. So there are a lot of, uh, the, this is a very nice uh, study which shows impact of intermittent fasting on metabolic parameters. And you will see that there is a decrease in HbA1c. It is, uh, so some studies show that the effect on glucose level is neutral. So there are, uh, you know, these are uh, outcome risk factors of cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes in 26 individuals of 22 intermittent fasting trial where they have shown that the impact on blood pressure was neutral, body weight went down, BMI went down, glucose levels were again not impacted, HbA1c went down and insulin levels went down. And again, this was again about in five intermittent fasting trials. Again, there were some data seen. So intermittent fasting in cardiovascular disease also show that people may lose more weight by intermittent fasting than by usual eating over a three-month period but not when compared against energy restricted diets for over three months or longer. So what happens is both ICR and CCR will cause weight loss. One has to cherry pick people who are good for ICR and who are good for CCR. Now there are some unanswered questions. Does time restricted feeding during morning 
afternoon or evening have different metabolic effects because we know circadian rhythm is a very important thing and whether skipping that breakfast actually will create less or more weight loss as compared to otherwise and really there are no answers there are studies which show breakfast is important there are studies which show it is not so we really don't know our weight loss independent uh, effect of intermittent fasting on cardiovascular risk marker and insulin resistance can fasting mimic diets uh, uh, reduce aging or chronic disease is there a intermittent fasting protocol associated with higher long term adherence so these are some unanswered questions as far as intermittent fasting is concerned these are positive claims that uh, increase the the popular positive claim is there is a increased weight loss as compared to isocaloric diet there is no evidence that if leads to higher energy expenditure so there is no evidence of that there is reduced hunger as compared to traditional uh, uh, caloric restricted diet again there are conflicting results there is improvement in insulin resistance independent of weight loss again in humans there are conflicting results glucose control also there uh, some rct show there is reduction in weight and hba1c however evidence that increased meal frequency is also uh, uh, associated with poor glycemic control and anti aging and anti inflammatory effects now what are the negative effects of um, uh, intermittent fasting so intermittent fasting would lead to overeating on feast day or could it trigger eating disorders now this is something which has been spoken about that when you restrict for a longer period of time then person tends to binge eat and again there is nothing no there is no data shown to uh, to show that this happens intermittent fasting could reduce lean body mass again results are conflicting we know when weight loss happens all fractions of body are lost so there is fat loss there is also muscle loss but whether there is increased lean body mass loss because of intermittent fasting is not known intermittent fasting is not sustainable and has high attrition rate again we know people who have been uh, fast doing intermittent fasting for years together and they are very comfortable with it and intermittent fasting leads to nutrient deficiency and lethargy but if intermittent fasting is accompanied by a well planned diet which is eaten in that 8 hour window i do not think there is nutrient deficiency or there is lethargy of course if there are ohas given then what has to change the doses of ohas before the person undergo uh, starts doing intermittent fasting and of course if somebody has a peptic ulcer or uh, then one should avoid using if one has postural hypotension then one is to be very important that even though they are doing if they need to hydrate themselves well drink a lot of water and if one has gout then they have to avoid dehydration and they have to avoid alcohol while they are doing intermittent fasting now this is a study which was conducted in my center and i had presented this in the bb tripathi symposium in 2020 where we had shown that you know we had uh, patients were randomized into two groups continuous caloric restriction and intermittent fasting all the diets were planned with a 300 calorie reduction as compared to baseline with 55% carbs 15% protein and 30% fat diets were primarily low glycemic index and fiber rich in both the arms as patient had come for a diet consultation even if group was given a planned diet and no ad libitum eating 16 is to 8 regime was followed by individuals who did if continuous caloric restriction group had three main meals and one snack which were distributed evenly through the day and no meal replacement or protein supplements were given this was the study design and these were the characteristics uh, cc group had more females uh, uh, as compared to men whereas whereas if group had uh, both uh, in the uh, equal amount and it was seen that so uh, uh, it was seen uh, this was the demographics that you know this was the age and years and people who chose intermittent fasting over continuous caloric restriction and what we saw is as age increases people preferred continuous caloric restriction if for something that younger people actually like to do and again the weight loss in both continuous caloric restriction and uh, intermittent fasting was uh, similar there was no statistical uh, difference between them even in triglyceride there was difference 
uh, and in the change in blood glucose also, I have showed better results than a continuous caloric restriction. So in conclusion of the study, effect of CC and IF on weight loss and metabolic parameters was studied. From current data, it can be seen that there was no statistically dif uh, statistical difference between both the groups on weight loss, on fasting sugars, and triglyceride. Shortcoming of the study was the sample size was small and the duration of the study was long, small, and therefore more long-term studies are required to understand their impact. Thank you so much for a patient hearing. I'll